Hello and welcome back to the CCNA journey with me, Ryan. And in this section, we're going to continue with the fundamentals, looking at subnetting. And this is going to be a questions and answer. We're going to have a bunch of questions and then I'm going to work out the answer with you. Uh, this will be part one. I'm also going to do a part two of this where we just do more Q&As. Uh, part one is actually taken from the CSENT and the ICND one. So it'll be the same video as uh, previously done. And part two will be a whole new video for this video series. And the idea behind this is just giving you more examples of subnetting so we can nail it down in this fundamental section to ensure that we understand it fully as we move into other studies for the CCNA. For those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, connect to me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or follow on Twitter. Okay, so question one, I'm gonna warm up with something. And the question I have here is, what are the following answers list the decimal notation of binary number 11100000. And we've got A, 192, B, 224, C, 240, or D, 248. Okay, so at this point, I encourage you to pause the video, get a pen and paper, and try to work out what you think the answer is. Once you have the answer, unpause the video, and we'll go through how I actually figure out the answer to this question, and we'll see how my calculations differ from yours. It's really important that you follow the process of pausing the video and doing the calculations, because with subnetting, repetition is key. So when you're ready, press play. Okay, so let's start. Initially, what we have to do is remember from the previous videos, we talked about our binary to decimal table. We said it starts with one, and we're gonna double each time eight places. And those eight places will give us 128. So we've got place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight places there. I went from 1 to 128, but you can obviously write from 128 to 1 if you wish. All we're going to do now is we're going to place this binary output under the relevant numbers from left to right. So we can see here that 1 is up this end, and we can see the next one is also turned on, and so is the next one, but all the others are turned off. Now it's important that when you're writing this table out, that you 128 is always at the left because it's the most significant bit, okay? And the one is always to the right because it's the least significant bit. Obviously, if you do it the wrong way around, this calculation here will be incorrect. So you need to make sure that even you write out left to right or right to left, you need to make sure that the most significant bit is towards the left. Now, you can see here we've put the ones under these three bits, which is 128, 64, and 32. And all we have to do now is add these numbers up, and that will get our answer. So 128 plus 64 is 192, plus 32 is 224. So the answer is 224. Okay, question two. How many usable IP addresses can be assigned to hosts that are on a slash 26 subnet? So remember, this slash 26 this is a representation of a subnet mask, but in what we call CIDR notation, slash notation, or network prefix. And the answer could be 254, 126, 62, or 30. Okay, at this point, pause the video, work out the answer, and then when you think you have it, we'll go through it together. Okay, welcome back. So, first things first, what we need to figure out is this slash 26. We need to write out those bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, already, we've got the three octets all sorted out. And we know that three octets all turned on are 24. So it's 8, 16, 24. 25, 26. Now we've hit the slash 26 requirement, which means the rest of the bits are going to be zero. And we need to go up to the 32 bits that are available in a subnet mask. So that'd be six more bits. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Now 
to work out how many hosts are going to be available, we need to do a calculation on the zeros. And the calculation is 2 to the power of n minus 2, where n is the number of bits that are turned off. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits turned off. So 2 to the power of 6 minus 2. So that's 1. So it's starting with 2. 4. And we've got 8. 16, 32, 64. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've done it 6 times because there's 6 bits and the calculation says 2 to the power of how many bits are turned off. Now minus 2 gives us 62. So the answer is C. There are 62 host inside a slash 26 subnet. Question three, what is the dotted decimal representation of a slash 13 subnet mask? A, 255-240-00, B, 255-248-00, C, 255-252-00, or D, 255-254-00. Again, make sure you pause that video, and then when you're ready, and you think you have the answer, press play, and we'll go through it together. Okay, so welcome back. First things first, let's get these 13 bits and write them out. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, dot. That's the first octet. All the bits turned on is 255. Then we're going to turn on the rest. So, it's the second act octet it's where the magic's going to happen. So, we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, it's five bits turned on, which means the rest of the bits in this octet is going to be turned off. So that's five, six, seven, eight. Because remember, there's eight bits in an octet. And then all the rest, the last two octets are all going to be zeros. Because we can see here, they're all zeros. We don't have to worry about the first octet because they're all 255. So really, the calculation lies in this second octet. Now, to work out what this is in decimal, the first thing we have to do is write out our binary to decimal conversion. Going from the most significant bit this time, from left to right, we're going to write out the conversion graph, but halving each time until eventually we get to one. And then it'll be eight places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to line up the ones under the bits. So we have one, two, three, four, five bits turned on. One, two, three, three bits turned off. All the bits that are turned on, we need to add up. So 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 equals our answer. And that is 128, 192, 224, 240, 248. So the answer is B. The representation of a slash 13 subnet mask is 255-24800. Okay, so question four. We're going to step up a little bit now. What is the maximum number of subnets and host per subnet for the 192.168.50.247.255.255.255? 224 network? A. Two subnets and 126 hosts per subnet. B. Four subnets with 64 hosts per subnet. C. Eight subnets or 30 hosts per subnet. Or D. 16 subnets with 14 hosts per subnet. Go ahead and pause that video. And when you believe you've got the answer, unpause it and we'll go through it together. Hello and welcome back. So how are we going to approach this? First things first, we're going to have a look at the subnet mask. And at the moment, it's in the dotted decimal format and we're going to convert it into binary. Now, the way we do that, once again, right now, our numbers from the most significant bit to the least most significant bit. We're going to write it out by eight places, half in each time, until eventually we hit one. We're then going to get this last octet, because this is kind of what I'm interested in at the moment, because I know that if we turn on all of the bits in binary, it equals 255. So I know already that I have 24 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and so forth, all the way up 24 times. What I don't know is how many ones 
need to be turned on in order to equal 224. And the way I'll need to figure that out is by asking myself some simple questions. First things first is, can 128 go into 24? And the answer there is clearly yes. And now what we have to do is get our 224, tick away our 128, and we're left with 96. Now we need to ask ourselves, can 64 go into 96? Yes, it can. And if we took away 64 from 96, we're left with 32. So can 32 go into 32? Yes, it can. So we took away 32, we're now left with none. Therefore, all the other bits are turned off. So now we know how many bits are on and how many bits are off in order to equal this dotted decimal value that we had originally, 224. Now we need to figure out how many holes and how many subnets we have. Now remember going back, we have those two formulas. We have two to the power of how many bits are turned on tells us how many subnets we have. And we have two to the power minus two of how many bits are turned off tells us how many hosts we have. So we're starting with the host. We're gonna go two, four, eight, 16, 32. So it's 32 host. But we also need to take away two because remember, there's one broadcast and one network, which leaves us 30 host. Now looking at the available answers, we already can tell there's only one answer here because the other host do not fit. However, if we wanted to also work out the subnets, again, we'd do two to the power of how many bits turned on, two, four, eight. So now we know for sure that C is the right answer. Okay, so the last one for this video, question five. Enter the last valid host on the network that the host 10 86 86 62 slash 27 is part of. Is it A, 10 86 86 63, B, 10 86 86 62, C, 10 86 86 65, or D, 10 86 87 63? Again, go ahead, pause that video, do your calculations, and when you're ready, press play. Okay, so welcome back, so let's go through the answer together. First things first is we have to find out what network the 1086A662 is actually a part of. And the only way we're gonna do that is, first of all, identifying how big the networks are and then writing out the ranges. So first things first, we've been given the southern mask of a slash 27. So let's put 27 bits, turn it into binary, and then find out how many subnets we actually have and how many host bits we have per subnet. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there is our 24. And we've got 25, 26, 27. And because we've hit the 27 that we needed, we're gonna turn the rest of the bits off and we know that there are 32 bits in the subnet mask. So that means they're gonna be five bits turned off. One, two, three, four, five. Now we need to find out how many hosts we have. And the way we're gonna find that out is using our calculation, which is two to the power of n minus two, where n is the number of bits that are turned off. So we're gonna go two, four, eight, 16, 32. And now we know that there's 32 host per subnet. We can get rid of the rest of the information we have here and we can start writing out our ranges. And the way they will look is starting from 10, 86, 86, 0 because we're only worried about the last octet, slash 27. And then the next network will be 10, 86, 86, 32. And the next network will be 10, 86, 86, 64. And since we've now exceeded the 62 that we originally wanted to get to, we can stop. We don't have to keep incrementing up now. And as we said earlier, 
If we look at this first network, the first usable will be dot one. The last usable will be dot 30 because 31, if you remember, is actually the broadcast. It then moves on to the network address or network ID of the next range. 31 being the first usable, 62 being the last usable, 63 being that broadcast. Now if we look at the question, enter the last valid host on the network that this host is actually a part of. Well, in matter of fact, the IP that is given inside the question is in fact the last usable IP in the subnet given. As such, the answer is B. Okay, so that's all we've got time for in this lesson. We went through questions one, two, three, and four. As the questions progressed, they obviously became a lot harder. We started off understanding sort of decimal to CIDR, CIDR to decimal. And it may be that that's not so much subnet in itself, but it's certainly an element of subnet in that you need to understand. The way I wanted to structure this video was to give you a interactive piece where you can try to figure out the questions yourself before watching me do the calculations and understanding. I think it's wise that you actually go away and you practice practice and uh, practice some more. Subnetting is one of those things where eventually you can just look at a side notation or look at a subnet mask and instantly be able to answer the questions without putting pen to paper. Ideally that's the stage you want to be at the point of not so much maybe taking the CSEN but certainly taking the CCNA. Also you want to be in that stage because moving forward it will help you understand routing, longest matches, wildcard, ACLs and a few other more advanced topics later on that relies on your subnet understanding to progress. I put a list here, you need to ensure that you understand the CIDR to decimal and decimal to CIDR. You need to know the formulas to calculate the host and subnet bits, you know, two to the power. And you need to be able to write out the ranges. So similar to what we've done on the last question there, where we figured out how big the ranges should be, and then the ability to write out all the ranges themselves and find out which host is the broadcast and which host would be the last usable, first usable, and which IP would be the network address or network ID. And last but not least, I hope this video has been informative, and if it has been, please do like and subscribe.